Welcome to the Elevate Everyday Podcast. I've got a very special guest today. He's a long-term client of mine, and and he's his name is where I'm from. So we got Houston on the podcast. So first and foremost, foremost, Houston, I appreciate you coming on, sir. So um, you know, to dive into it, like I said, a long-term client. He's a D1 college football athlete or ex D1 football college athlete. Where, where did you play football again, Houston? Yeah, I played a little bit at Baylor, just a little. Like Baylor? it was like a semester. I retired early. I was getting, okay. I, was, I wasn't seeing the field. I was a punching bag in practice. <laughs> so, yeah, so that, that was kind of part of Houston's, you know, transition into working with us is, you know, he had some, um, some, some injuries from football and stuff like that. And we've been able to, to kind of like work around that, get him to a really good point now. So, Houston, first question I had for you, um, you know, because I know you've expressed to me um, that you've struggled with, you know, anxiety, depression and stuff like that. And honestly, a lot of our clients have, and I'm sure a lot of listeners, you know, I think it's very common, even if people don't talk about it a whole lot. So um, my question is like, how has this program and working out, like how, how has this helped you mentally? Yeah, man, it's uh, honestly, it's been like a game changer and a life changer, really. Um, like like you said, like I, I struggled. I, I'm like clinically depressed. You know, I got diagnosed for that like a while ago, probably my, uh, a little bit after my freshman year of, of college. Okay. Um, so it's something that I've always had to kind of like deal with. And, you know, like you do all the things to deal with it, right? They give you medication, all that stuff. Nothing has really been um, fruitful to me other than working out and then, you know, like we, we, we hooked up a couple of years ago and it was like, it was in the crunch of things of, of me transitioning out of like another career that I had and I'm um, trying to figure myself out, you know, like kind of going through a little bit of an identity crisis, uh, if, if yeah. you shall say. Um, and man, that, 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 that first year that I had with you and like just being diligent about, um, you know, like kind of centering everything that I did around me being healthy, like starting off with like me working out and that led to me uh meditating and praying during the morning and going out for walks and like spending time with myself and getting comfortable with that and spending time with god and all that so yeah. i mean it's it's been a game changer like just being the center of like of, of what i've been trying to do with my mental health journey that's awesome man for, first and foremost i appreciate you being open and talking about this because a lot of people wouldn't be comfortable with that so i appreciate you for that i'm sure a lot of people listening are gonna resonate with your story and everything but that's awesome it sounds like kind of like, you know, getting in back into a routine was kind of the catalyst for a lot of different things. I know that it seems like you've gone through a lot, like you mentioned, right? Like you, you've had career change since you've been working with me. A lot of stuff has happened, um, but you just, you haven't used any of that as an excuse to stop and you just keep putting one foot in front of the other and keep moving forward. So respect you for that. Um, and it, and it seems sure. like, yeah, it seems like a lot of growth has happened over the last couple of years. Um, so, and I, you know, I think a lot of times it's, people don't realize sometimes like see, things seem like they're going wrong a lot before they, they really go right. If that makes sense. And it seems Absolutely. like, that, yeah, it seems like that was kind of what happened with you. Um, so yeah. So what specifically, you know, about kind of getting into a routine um, was it that, that you feel like maybe transferred into some of these other areas of your life? Yeah, man, I, I think routine is everything. Um, I, I'm a very creative person. Like, not only do I, do, and I don't like saying like I suffer from depression. I don't suffer from depression. You know, like I productively yeah. struggle um, through it. And honestly, like I've been like in a really good space, been able to handle it, um, because of this and other things. Um, but you know, like th- uh, routine is needed by everybody. I'm I'm a person who's like creative by nature. I like you know like creating and I can I'm really good off my feet doing stuff off the cuff and all that stuff but like man when you have a routine something to anchor you in yeah. it allows you to deal with ambiguity pretty pretty good so yeah. um like I said like the routine that you, you know like you and I started was like just like something that seemed natural because I was a football player it was something that right. I kind of like knew about and did already you know like of yeah. getting in the weight room starting early um sometimes doing it late and kind of revolving my day and time around that so when I started like picking that back up and getting back into that rhythm, I was start I was able to transfer that into my professional and, and personal personal life as well. Now, were there hiccups? Of course, you know, like you and I like have authentically kind of <laughs> gone through that those battles yeah. of of missteps and all of that stuff. But I mean, like when you have something to anchor you anchor you, you like you always have something to go back to. So yeah, it's always been a 
great to know that like I can always lean back in something that I can control. You can control what you can control, right? And all the right. other things you really can't control it. So when you put your hand to something that you can control, man, it just makes the th- it opens up your mind like literally, and it makes the things that um, you feel like you can't control allow you to take one step after the other and see if you can do the best you can in it. That's awesome, man. Man, have you been watching the Elevate Everyday podcast? You're saying some of the things that I feel like. <laughs> yeah, I, I missed a few on my bad, bro. I'll get on some. <laughs> no, I'm saying you're you're saying the things that I usually say, man. So so yeah, so something's rubbing off on you, but but yeah, I 100. percent And I really love the word you used when you say anchor because you know, and I've, I don't think I've really used it like that, and that's a really good way to say it because you know, like you said, sometimes it seems like things are just out of your control and just like things are going crazy. Right. But when you are able to like take control and like control what you do with your body and control, like what, what you eat and stuff like that, you feel like you have a, you're, you're kind of getting that control back in a sense. Um, or at least that's how I feel a lot of times. And a yeah. lot of our clients have expressed that. So that's awesome, man. And yeah. And um, it's really cool because I feel like a lot of people, especially, you know, athletes like you, like they'll, they'll go through that period in their life and then they, you know, they, they stop playing their sport and it's kind of just like, they let that almost like version of them die. I've seen that happen with like, you know, a lot of, a lot of really good athletes from my high school and, you know, just people that even played college ball and stuff like that. Um, But I think it's really cool that you, you went back into coaching and you're, you're making this a part of your life again. Um, Because I think, you know, when we, you know, as football players, we've talked about this, I played football too. You know, it's like something we did for so long and we always had coaches, right? We always had people like holding us accountable, like kind of yeah. helping us with that discipline with our fitness and everything. And we're always like striving for more. And it's like, if you don't, if you just let that completely stop, it feels like part of you is almost like missing, or at least that's, yeah. that's, that's how I yeah. felt when I stopped playing football, right? That's so, exactly how I felt as well. Yeah. I was, yeah. it was like, I had a midlife crisis at like 19, man. Like you're trying to <laughs> yeah. figure out who you are outside of that and you know like they start us early in texas y'all so like yeah i, I started like i like at four man yeah. i was a big kid <laughs> so they let me play a little bit early so like yeah. for that to be a part of your life for so long and then all of a sudden it's gone you're trying to figure out who you are outside of it mm-hmm. and then sometimes when you're f- trying to figure out who you are outside of that you play tricks on yourself and thinking that man like you need to be the antithesis of of, of what that was man and like nah you know like yeah. There are elements of that that were me, you know, and I should like and and I, I should embrace that part of my identity and see how it fits in the new phases of my life that I'm going into. So, yeah. Like, yeah. again, like b- getting back on this protocol with you, man, like, again, it's been like life anchoring. Awesome. I love that, man. Yeah. And I, I think it's really cool how you really have transferred that athlete mindset into this program. Um, and, I, and I think it's really cool, too, that you're also kind of like entrepreneurial right and, you, and we, we can relate on that on that side of things and it's what I like to say a lot of times is when you're kind of an entrepreneur or just like when you're an ambitious professional whatever it is that you are doing like I almost think of it as like I'm I'm training for the sport of life when I'm going in and working That's out good, and stuff bro. like that yep. <laughs> so, yep. so so I don't know if you can resonate with that but um but that's just how I feel a lot of times and I feel like you know I, I see kind of like for me, I see that in you too. It's like you, it's not even as much the physical. It's like, I'm training my mind to be able to yeah. handle whatever life throws at me. That's so, good, man. Love yeah. that. Awesome. So yeah, so I'm going to take a little bit of a pivot here. Um, cause you know, you travel a lot for work, <laughs> right? So, and we, <laughs> we have other clients that, that travel a lot for work too. And I'm sure some of the listeners travel a decent amount and just, or vacations even and stuff like that. But what we've, I feel like we've gotten a pretty good system down at this point when, um, when you're traveling as far as diet and workout side goes, when, when there's a good gym in the hotel, right. And stuff like that. But, <laughs> but what, what's your advice for people to stay on track while traveling? Yeah. My biggest advice is to stay on track. You know, it's just <laughs> as simple as that. I mean, uh, honestly, like we can, we can make all the excuses of the world. I know I've made a couple of excuses in the world when I've been traveling, things can get kind of hectic. Um, but again, like if you, have a solid routine when you're at home like almost nothing really changes if you stick to that routine right you know like so um you just gotta like allow yourself the time and the energy to do what you need to do for yourself because you're giving you're you're giving your time and your energy to your work or wherever you're going when you travel Mm -hmm. you know like and you shouldn't 
like shortchange yourself in that, you know, yeah. and like, and especially if you want to show up as the best version of yourself in the spaces that you're about to walk into. So like, for me, I think that that, that was something like that became like a aha realization multiple times in our journey together. But like, yeah. uh, um, also like having like a good relationship with you and um, have kind of like encouraging me, first of all, getting in my butt a little bit, <laughs> second of all, <laughs> and, and like uh, helping, uh, helping me take like baby steps right sometimes you just need to take that first step right yeah. in order to like make it something that like can be a prolonged a prolonged habit so when you do that like if it makes everything you, you you almost wonder why like man why was this difficult in the first place it's just yeah. it's more, it's a mental thing more than anything yeah yeah almost like uh you know when you get to the hotel i'm like hey send me a video of what you <laughs> <Yeah>. have <laughs> it's like that's that one little baby step it's like yep. hey, just kind of that little nudge like oh yeah <laughs> i need to still think about working out here and stuff yep. like that so um but yeah man like i went to a, on a trip to oklahoma recently um and and i got a couple of workouts in i know that if i wouldn't have like coming back like you said it's just like it's almost like you're starting over again yeah. right it's yep. like you got to build that momentum back up and everything so so i'm really glad you're saying it because i feel like herb and i are always just like saying it to people and i don't want to be like you know don't enjoy your travels and stuff like that but it's it's cool coming from you because you're because you're like speaking to how it benefits you and stuff like that and it, i completely agree you got to pour into yourself first right yeah. especially if you're traveling for work and stuff like that so that's awesome cool man um what about diet side because that was that was the, i got my kind of two cents on it what's what's your uh What's your feedback on that? Or yeah, diet man, it's easy to fall into uh, temptation. It's easy, you know. Like it's, yeah. you, you go out, you know, like you don't know where you are. You try to go to a pretty nice and decent restaurant. And you try, you you want what you want, right? You can kind of junk it up if you if you allow yourself to. Uh, again, that's something that's like you know, like keep it simple. Like if you, for me, um, and I just did this in my most recent travel when I was traveling to Lubbock, you know, like I was able to prep my food and take it with me because I knew I was going to be in the state of Texas. I didn't have to get on a plane. So if you know you're not getting on a plane and like, go ahead and prep your food, you know, yeah. I know sometimes it can be a hassle if you're trying to travel like on a plane, but like if you're driving, then you know, like nothing changes there. Right. right. Um, and then if you do have to fly out to another state or even country, you know, like just being cognizant and aware of like what you should eat, you know, like understand portion sizes and just keep it simple with that too. So like, giving myself a nice clean protein, like grilled chicken is like ch chicken is my go-to um, mm. and some sort of mixed vegetables or greens is what I'm going to be having with that. And I'm not going to, and I'm not drinking any sugars, you know, so like staying away from the sodas and all that stuff, they'll, they'll tempt you. They'll, they'll be on like the, <laughs> the stewardess will be with the cart and like, Hey, what, what do you want? And I, I want to say some, some uh, ginger ale, but like, nah, yeah. let me go ahead and get some water up in here. Right. <laughs> Hydrate myself. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just, you got to just keep things kind of simple. Yeah. Yeah, I, that's awesome, man. I I really love what you're saying because I feel like people just throw out these excuses, right? Like uh, on this side of things, it's like I'm traveling, so I, I can't stick to my meal plan, right? Yeah. It's like they just throw that out. Like it's just a blanket statement. But we have clients like you and others that are are taking the steps to stay on track when they're when they're traveling for work and stuff like that, right? And it's you're completely right. Like if you're if you're traveling in state you can still just prep normally and take it with you. Right. So that, and then if you're, if you're on a plane, like I know I'm going to a trip soon in Colorado, like whenever I go on a trip out of state, I, I go to a grocery store right by me and I, I like kind of get my stuff ready just as if I was at home. Right. Um, yeah. Yeah. And, or like I'm, I'm seeing where the closest gym is <laughs> that I can go to and stuff like that. So there's, there's ways around it. And I think people just throw out these, these excuses just like as if it's a blanket statement and there's no way around it. You know, another example is like, you know, you've, you've had your little tweaks and injuries across the time. Right. But it's even stuff like that isn't an excuse to stop. Right. Like right. I, um, I, I had a really messed up ankle at one point and I just did upper body. Right. It's like, yeah. you, you, odds are you didn't like injure your whole body and there's still stuff you can do. <laughs> right. Right. right? right. So, right. Yeah. There's been times where you've kind of had like a, a tweak in your knee and stuff like that. And we work yeah. around it. You know, so I, I just think you're a really good example um, and you can speak to some of that stuff of like just just not using excuses and, and working around it as you still can. So, yeah, yeah, man, it's yeah. trying to take out that mentality of like life happening to me and like you happening to life, man. So like if you want to kind of like change, I, I, I feel like everything is, is an energy, right? Like if you have a disposition about yourself, that's like I don't want to say, well, it's me, but like you feel like, man, life is lifing right now. 
And, like, it's okay to kind of, like, stay in that for a little bit. But, like, after a while, it's like, hey, you need to, like, kind of, like, attack it, you know? Like, yeah. and, again, like, that's the easiest thing in your scope of control is, like, and, and man, it's, like, it's very uplifting when you're able to see something that, like, in your mind was a big hurdle. Like, I, I tore my patellar tendon. You were helping me work, kind of, like, work through through the, through that and the rehab of that and all that stuff. And, like, I couldn't, like, squat the way I wanted to squat, but I was able to still do things, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, like, when you accomplish something that you saw in your mind, like, how am I going to do that? Mm-hmm. And you do it, you know, you're like, okay, like, what else can I take on? And what else can yeah. I accomplish, man? So it's, like, it's almost like it kind of feeds you um, better and positive energy. Yeah, 100%, man. Yeah, and, and you've you've overcome a lot, man. So I just want to keep giving you kudos. But what what – does drive you like what what's your mission what's your why like what what gets you up out of bed when things are tough like what what really drives you with everything yeah man i got a seven about to be eight year old daughter man so yeah. she's <laughs> she's the she's the the purpose you know like i i'm 38 years old i'm getting up there in age you can see the grace kind of like coming up in the beard and all that stuff but like she's active yeah so i want to stay active i don't want to be like them those those dads that like is like go run around over there and like i want to be running with my kid you know yeah. so that's one of the big reasons. That's my biggest why. Uh, but another why is like, man, I, I feel like, you know, I got to put a purpose on me and I feel like it'd be a waste to kind of like waste that the gifts and talents and purpose that he has on me. And um, in order for me to accomplish those things, I got to be around. And <laughs> so yeah. like, uh, I, I got to be, I got to take care of myself. I got to eat better. I got to, I got to exercise. I got to have time where I have like mental breaks. I got to have time where I pray. I got to, all those things I need to do, do those things to, to, to stay here and stay well. So uh, those, those are my motivation. It's like living a good quality of life and, and, and being, being with my kid and, and, and actually enjoying the time that I have with her. Absolutely. Yeah. Utmost respect for you for, for all that, man. That's, that's super powerful. I, I know that's just what a lot of listeners need to hear that our, our dads or parents out there. Right. Um, and like I said, me and Herb say these types of things and you're just, you're just, being an example of it right so so i appreciate you for that um yeah and (laughs) a little anecdote um your your daughter we've joked because she's like your cameraman (laughs) sometimes she's she's doing cartwheels when you're getting videos on stuff it's so funny (laughs) yeah she'll poke her head and become the star of the show (laughs) yeah i love it you're getting her involved in everything so it's it's really cool so but yeah so what's your message Houston, that you want to get across the listeners what's kind of you know what what's your message yeah just like uh take one step at a time you know like i think we <clears throat> sometimes get stuck in ourselves of like we look at the end goal of where we want to be and that can be very intimidating sometimes yeah and, and it is and you don't have to like intimidate yourself like life can be intimidating by itself well why do that to yourself you know um you just have to have a positive outlook that you are going to get to your goal um, if you take this one step that you have in front of you. And then after that step, take the next step or that you have in front of you. And it doesn't matter how long it takes, you know, like by the time that you look up, keep your head down. By the time you look up, you're going to be you know, like, if not exactly where you want to be, progressing towards where you want to be. Um, and and the last thing I would say is like, you know, like taking small steps is good, but like there, there's, there's going to be a point of your journey too where you're going to like, hey, I can pick it up a little bit. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's like, it's like, I've seen these steps. These steps were good enough to like, get me confident. You know, I got to assess myself. I, I, I'm I'm more confident today than I was yesterday. Let me see if I can push myself past my comfort a little mm-hmm. bit to, to make sure that I, that I, that I get to this, to this goal on schedule, you know, like, or even yeah. you know, like before schedule. So, you know, like have, have a little bit of, of respect for yourself, encourage yourself, you know, like, you know, like take the baby steps, but man, like don't don't be afraid to like take bigger steps and be okay with messing it up. You know, like who's yeah. judging you on a mess up? Mess mm-hmm. you learn something that's going to help you um, fulfill what you're trying to to accomplish um, when, when you mess up. Like you always want to fail forward. And, uh, I think the thing is we live in a society where we don't want to make mistakes out loud um, or even quiet anymore. Um, and I uh, mean, the, the mistakes is, is where the growth happens. So like, don't, 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 don't be afraid of it. hundred percent, hundred percent. Yeah. And something I wanted to go back to that you mentioned earlier is like, let yourself feel like, if you're not feeling hundred percent, let yourself feel that. But then you, you mentioned like, you know, letting yourself feel that, but then taking the steps of action to get out of that. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. And I think that's super powerful because 
you don't want to just hold everything in, right? Because if you just hold everything in, I don't remember who told me this, but it's like a spring, right? It's like you're you're pushing the spring down. Eventually, mm-hmm. it's going to spring up, right? Yeah. And kind of come out in a way that you don't want, right? So if you if you let yourself feel whatever you're feeling, you know, sit with it for a little bit, but then take those steps of action that build that momentum, stacking up those wins to help you. Like you said, taking those those one steps, putting it in front of you in front of another, you're going to get a lot further than if you just try to hold it down or if you just like, you know, try to just combat against it, right? Yeah. So. So I think it's super powerful. Absolutely. Um, Regulate yourself, man. It's no self-loathing, self-inventory, you know, like take an inventory of yourself, assess where you are, allow yourself to be where you are and and feel that and understand that. And then like, yeah, take the next step, you know, like make a, make a small plan for yourself and then, and then enlarge it as you go. Yeah. Yeah. And what you said, I really liked about the comfort zone because right. It's, you kind of have to, almost like you said, like reassess every once in a while and be like, okay, have I kind of expanded my comfort zone? And now I'm in this new comfort zone. It's like, do I need to like expand the walls a little bit wider and see what else I can kind of accomplish here? Right. So I think that's super powerful. It's just like, you know, continuously goal setting, continuously like quarter, like assessing where you're at and seeing what the next goals are. How can I expand this comfort zone I'm in right here? Because if you, if you have, if you stay in the comfort zone and like I said, it expands, right? So you, you might've expanded over out of your previous comfort zone, but you might be in a new comfort zone. It's like, mm-hmm. you got to keep breaking those walls down, keep moving yeah. forward. So it's awesome. Love it. Awesome. Houston, what's, what's in store for you in 2025? Man, uh, <laughs> the sky is the limit, I guess, yeah. you know, like I'm, I'm working, uh, two, two jobs that I love, um, a lot. Um, one is, uh, I, I, as an account manager for, social emotional learning curriculum for schools. So like, nice. uh, you know, like just got that job when, when like I was at my lowest, like I was looking for, you know, this man, like, you know, my dream, like I was, I was looking for a job, you know, I just got done with the fellowship that kind of like was paying my way. And then I was like, uh, I don't want to say broke, but I was like trying to figure it out um, yeah. for a little bit. So I got this and that was, a, it's been amazing. Awesome. Um, and I also like do, um, consultant work for the Buck Institute of Education. So I go around teaching project-based learning to different school districts around the, the country. Now now it's expanding like um, out, out of country as well. So nice. I know that that's going to be up for me in 2025, but I also want to start doing some things for myself. So like I'm trying to get into some motivational speaking. I'm actually do, I'm writing a couple of materials. So like I'm trying to author a book. We'll see if I can nice. get that accomplished and done uh, by the end of 2025. I'm being more like very realistic about that goal. But yeah, there's a lot of things that I want to get done and accomplish. And I think that, that I can. Awesome. Dude, I, I can't wait. I, I know there's big things in store. It's, I mean, you've made, you've accomplished so much just from, you know, what you've gone through these past couple of years. So, and I know, like I said, like sometimes things like don't feel like they're going right because they're about to go really right. <laughs> and, yeah. I, and I can see that that's, you know, that I, I think that's your future here real soon. So hey man, I'll um, receive it. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Well, cool guys. Well, first and foremost, appreciate you coming on the podcast, Houston. I, I know the listeners got a lot out of this guys. Like Houston is a leader. He's, he's, he's doing the damn thing. Right. So if you're a fitness junkie already, you know, take some of these principles, you know, around the travel and just like going through injuries and just like, you know, working around your, your mental health and stuff like that. Like Houston's someone that's leading by example. And I appreciate you for that. Um, guys, if you got any questions, let us know in the comments, make sure to like, and subscribe, and we'll see you in the next video. But in the meantime, elevate every damn day. Peace. Elevate. Only obligation is to tell it straight.